Hello everybody, my name is Kingsticks. I'm a Master Tier player and I'm going to be showing you the settings I use in League of Legends for Season 8. To better show you what my settings are, just take notice of my minimap. This minimap is currently on 250 and I'll explain that later. I'm going to restore default and show you what I do. So after clicking OK, just click Escape to get back in your settings and this is what the default settings will look like. The first thing I do whenever I am changing my settings to what I use is I do quick cast all. I like to be able to use my spells and items quickly without having to double tap or press a second time. The next thing I do is turn off replace quick cast with quick cast with indicator. I find it very annoying if you're wondering what it does basically. So I want to use my W and when I go to press it, it comes up with the indicator and when I let go of W, it automatically uses it. I find that very frustrating. However, if you are a newer player and don't understand ranges of your spells, or I have trouble using them, this might be helpful, but for me, I find this really annoying, so I go ahead and turn that off. The next thing I do is I turn my ultimate on to T. The reason why I do that is because under player movement, on the second one, attack move click, I put it as R. For me, this makes it very easy for me to kite enemies with ease, especially since I play a lot of Twitch jungle, and I'm trying to transition more over to carry rolls. I find it helps me out quite a bit. The last thing I'd change in the hotkeys would be under items and it's under quick cast for item six. I put it on my mouse button. My mouse button happens to just be the number nine and then I click okay. And then let's pretend this was Bork. I could put it right here. Just click my mouse button and use it. I typically do this whenever I play Warwick and I buy Tiamat. That way I can weave in my Tiamat in between my autos really easily. Okay, let's show you the rest of the settings. Under video, you want to set your resolution to whatever it has the little star by. That means this is your native resolution. Now, if your computer or laptop is really shit and you can't even get up to 60 frames, you might want to lower this a little bit, but ideally you want to have it on the one with the little star by it. If you struggle with differentiating colors and you're colorblind, definitely turn on colorblind mode. If you do struggle with certain colors like blues and greens, this can help you out a lot. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see certain spells or abilities. There's no reason to turn off eye candy. It's basically just little stuff around the map like this critter right there. I think it's kind of nice and adds some spice to the game. But if you are struggling with your quality and frame rate, turning this off might help out a little bit. For me, I use borderless because whenever I record, I use OBS and... OBS can't use full screen, it messes it up. However, if you're trying to get the maximum quality and maximum frame rate out of your computer and out of League of Legends, you'd be better off going to full screen 100%. Under graphics, I put my character quality on high because I have a really good graphics card. I do effect qualities on high, but I could easily go to very high. Environment quality on high. And for shadows, I just leave them off. I feel like they don't really help me in the game whatsoever. They also tax my graphics card. And whenever I am recording, which is whenever I play, it's a pretty big toll on my graphics card and my frame rate can struggle at times. So turning shadows off definitely does help out a lot with your frame rate and stability. I do like to have character inking on. For example, look at Twitch right now. He looks good. But whenever you turn character inking off, he kind of looks empty. Like he doesn't have a strong outline to his character. With character inking on, I can recognize champions more quickly and their outlines and their hitboxes. I feel like this helps with hitboxes a little bit, but with shadows, I don't feel like it helps at all. But if you are having trouble with quality, definitely turn off inking. Under frame rate, this completely depends on what you can handle. In general, more frames equals better. However, after around 200 frames, you're not going to be seeing any rise in quality. If you have a really bad laptop or a computer, you really want to be shooting for at least 60 frames per second. If you're not getting at least 60, it's going to be very choppy, especially in team fights. You're going to have trouble clicking accurately and getting off your attacks when you need to. If you have a good computer or laptop, but it's only 60 hertz refresh rate, it is still better to get in more frames because it will overall increase the accuracy and refresh rate. It'll help stop things like stuttering. So even if you do have a 60 hertz monitor, but you have a good laptop or computer, bumping it up to 80 or 120 can be really helpful. In my case, I have a 144 hertz monitor, so I just put it on 144 FPS. I find it works really well for me. If I was trying to get the ultimate performance and I wasn't worried about recording, streaming, or any of that, I would just go with full screen and probably do uncapped. The thing you guys need to keep in mind is having more than 144 frames is barely noticeable. The biggest difference you'll see is the difference between 25 to 60 frames. It's absolutely huge. And then a still a pretty big difference is from 60 frames to 120 frames. 
but after around 120 144 frames the advantage and difference that you're actually going to see becomes very very small so in general if you have bad computer try to get at least 60 frames if you have a better computer try to get as many frames as you can but don't feel bad but don't feel pressured into using uncapped the last two settings i was actually wrong about in my last video on my settings for season seven and that is anti-aliasing and wait for vertical sync if you have a good computer theoretically you should be using anti-aliasing it helps with little jaggies and jaggedness personally i don't mind jaggedness and it kind of helps me play since i'm so used to it whenever i have it on it feels weird but if you do have a better machine, theoretically, it would be better to have it on. I personally don't like it. However, with the vertical sync, if you're talking to anybody who cares about quality, like professional gamers and who want very little input lag, they would highly recommend you to stay away from vertical sync. All vertical sync does is stop your graphics card from putting out more frames then your monitor can technically show at once. So if your monitor is 60 hertz, if I were to put on vertical sync, it would cap my frame rate at 60 FPS. For example, I'll put it on uncapped and I'm, I'll be getting around 200 frames. My monitor's refresh rate, it's hertz, is 144. So I have it on cap right now, but if I put on wait for vertical sync, check this out, it'll go to 144 exactly. One big issue with V-Sync is your graphics card isn't 100 percent consistent and getting it to communicate with your monitor completely accurately by using vertical sync can actually cause a lot of stuttering and input lag i personally experienced this i used to use this setting way back then but whenever i turned it off i was like holy crap this is a lot easier just keep these two settings off try to get as many frames as you can but ideally get at least 60 frames and you don't really worry about uncapped. Uncapped is really unnecessary because any frames after around 120 isn't very noticeable at all. And if you run uncapped, you're gonna be running your graphics card into the ground. It's also going to possibly drop more because if you don't have good airflow in your computer, if you put your computer together poorly with cords and cables going everywhere, if hot air is getting trapped, it can be harder on your graphics card. So in general, just stay away from uncapped. All right, now moving on to the sound settings. I like to put my master volume at 50 and my music volume at 50. Everything else I leave at 75. I find music volume doesn't help me that much, but if I turn it off altogether, it does mess up my play. So master volume 50, music volume 50, and just leave everything else at 75. And if you're a true G, you'll turn the theme music back to classic. I'm just kidding, don't do that. Okay, under interface, this is where I actually do make a lot of changes. So I like to change my HUD side down to zero and your HUD size is basically this right here. It's where you see your champion, your spells and your items. And I don't like to have this very big because it gets in the way of the game. If you're ever fighting somebody, if you have your HUD size on 100, Look at the size of that, that gets in the way, I hate it. Next, I lower my chat scale down by a lot. I don't like my chat scale very big at all, I keep it at zero. So if you look at my chat right here, it's very small, that way I'm not focused on reading it and rage typing to teammates. So I just keep it right here by my mini map. The next thing you might notice, like I said at the beginning of the video, the massive size of my mini map, I like it this big, that way whenever I'm moving across the map, I can look at my mini map and get a good idea of what's going on. Or I could just use my F keys, F2 through F4. F2 will go to the top laner, F3 will go mid, F4 will go to the AD carry, and F5 will go to the support. But in general, the AD carry and support are always together, so there's no reason of doing that. Just put your three fingers on the F2, F3, and F4. To get your minimap to 250, it's not actually possible doing it through this normal tool. All you can get it to is 100, and at the lowest end, it gets to zero, and zero is like way too small, and 100 still way too small. So to get it to 250, you actually have to go into the persisted settings in the game file. It's not cheating or hacking. I asked Riot, and they said it's completely legal as long as you can access the file without having to use a third party software or anything like that. So it's perfectly fine. If you're curious on how to do this, just click in the upper right hand corner of this video and there should be a link to how to do it. It's pretty quick and easy. It only takes two or three minutes. All right, the next thing is I always turn off show summoner names because it's annoying seeing the names, especially if there's a lot of X's and numbers in it. They also seem to get in the way in team fights. It clogs up the whole thing. Going down the list, I like to change the ability cooldown display from seconds to minutes and seconds. It makes it easier. So if your ultimate's on a minute, 20 second cooldown, Instead of having to do the math of, ew, it's 80 seconds, that's minute 20, it'll just say at one minute 20 seconds. I think that's a lot easier, especially when you are in the heat of the game. You don't want to have to be doing this side math and figuring out when your spell is going to be up or maybe when their flash is going to be up, that kind of thing. 
The next thing I do is I put my mini map on the left side because I'm left eye dominant. If you're right eye dominant, of, of course, just leave it on the right side of your screen. The next thing I do is I turn on show timestamps that way in chat. If I want to say graves flash, then you can just look at the timestamp. I set it at 333 and you know, flash is on a five minute cooldown. So you could say, oh, graves flash is up in 830. So it's a lot quicker this way if you're in a hurry. Also, if someone types something, you have a general idea of when they said it rather than wondering, oh, when did they say that? So turn on your timestamps. And also I like to mute enemy emotes because emotes are tilting as hell and I don't want to see that shit in my game. I don't need someone to be hitting me with that dab emote or the good job emote when they kill me. I mean, that doesn't help me play better. I don't understand why anyone would really want to see that. And I also like to turn off all chat because people just use all chat to complain or they use it to try to get under your skin and call you trash. So I don't really see the point of having all chat on either. The next thing I do over here is I like to turn on the experience. That way you can see whenever you're getting experience from a distance, whenever you have this on and the minion's dying over here, if you get a little closer, it'll show like plus 26, plus 25, and you'll have an idea of how far you can get away and still get experience just based off of that. One other thing I like to do is show spell cost. Whenever it's turned off, look on your HUD. You won't see how much mana it is unless you hover your cursor over it and then you actually look at it. But if you don't wanna hover your cursor and spend that time, just show spell cost and then it will say 40, 70, or how much ever it costs right on the outside so you don't actually have to hover your cursor over. I think it's really nifty and useful. Definitely turn that on. Okay, now under the game settings, this is where things get spicy. I leave mouse speed at 50 and my mouse DPI is currently at 1700 and, and I use a Logitech G502, please sponsor me. And then I like to change my camera mouse move speed up to 65. That way, whenever I'm trying to look around like this with my mouse, I can move easier at 50. For me personally, I find it's too slow. If you're newer to the game, leaving it at 50 is fine so you can get a feel of how fast it goes. Otherwise you might move too far. Just figure out what works for you in that area. And the camera move speed for the keyboard, I like it to have it at 80 now and I can move around really fast with it. I've gotten better at it. So if I'm just walking around, I can use it to see areas quicker sometimes. I usually use this when I'm dead, not usually when I'm alive. Okay, in the last three settings I implement are auto attack. What auto attack does is let's say I just click over here and then since there's an enemy in range, I automatically start attacking it. I personally like this because whenever I'm moving or just do an awkward click, it can help me out because my character will automatically kind of take care of it. So other people don't like it because they'll be waiting in a bush and they'll accidentally attack an enemy. But if I walk over here and then just press S, so S is for stop. If you just press S, I won't auto attack automatically. Just press S. So I'll, I'll go into the bush, press S, and then your champion won't do any command until you issue it. So I personally like to do that. If you find yourself having trouble with it, then I definitely turn it off. If you use attack move, then you definitely should turn this on, which is attack move on a cursor. Whenever you enable this, attack move will prioritize the target closest to your mouse click rather than targeting whatever's closest to your champion. If you don't turn this on and you're using attack move, it's gonna attack whatever's closest to you. So even if there's a character past this dummy that is like 200 health and I wanna shoot him real quick, it's gonna automatically shoot this guy, even if I path over there. So I would definitely suggest turning this on. But if you're using attack move click like me, you won't even have to mess with that. But the point is you should have control over how big your mini map is. And that's what I want you guys to do is to make it bigger, get more map awareness. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you.